Okay, real quickly, you can reach me on my blog, itproguru.com, email dstoltz or itproguru at microsoft.com. And uh, let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, LinkedIn, Dan Stoltz. Uh, value stream mapping, this is what it looks like. It's all whiteboarding. Okay, this is the way that I do it. So this talk, I'm gonna really talk to you about some of the um, best practices that I've come up with as I've been working with um, mostly large enterprises, but some medium and some small as well, uh, as I help them, uh, coach them through their DevOps journey. Um, I'm a chief technology strategist for Microsoft, uh, which really just means that I'm both a public speaker and a senior engineer that goes out to customers and helps them with their most challenging problems. Uh, of the last few years, the most challenging problems have been getting started with DevOps. So that's been a, a huge play in my world. And the value stream mapping is about analyzing and uh, understanding where waste is and then you know, figuring out a way to uh, get rid of that waste to help shorten the lead time, the lag time, and all the wasted time in between with handoffs and other things. And we'll, we'll talk more about that in a bit. What I want to start with, though, is just a basic DevOps. My perspective on DevOps is very different than I think most of the sessions that you've probably done uh, related to DevOps. Uh, DevOps is a, uh, is a union of people, process, and tools, but I always talk first and foremost about the people. The people is so much more important to me. And um, whenever I start uh, on a value stream mapping, when I start you know, this whole DevOps story, uh, I'm always starting with one thing in mind, a shared mission for, for all. Um, and the one that I use that works great, deliver a great product that inspires our customers to become raving fans. And the reason I like this is because, one, it's really powerful, um, and two, it's, it's a message that regardless of what department you're from, depart, regardless of what your job is, it's something that, uh, that you can resonate around uh, and, and work together on that, uh, on that mission. And I'll, I'll explain more as we go through uh, the presentation. So I'm going to start off with a bunch of just checklists and stuff, things that you want to know about as you get started on your uh, introducing DevOps. Uh, and the first step of DevOps is, uh, or when I introduce DevOps to a customer, I start with an hour and a half meeting, well, usually between 20 minutes and an hour and a half. Um, at, at most an hour and a half because I, I want everything to go incredibly fast. I don't want to have a four-hour boardroom or anything to kick things off. Uh, I don't work like you know big companies that go in with eight people and spend five days figuring out how to get started. We're going to get started. We're going to get started fast. Everything about DevOps, agile. Everything about DevOps, fast. Um, so I, I have a checklist here of things that you want to do in that first hour and a half meeting. Uh, you want to walk away with understanding what tools they use, understanding uh, what their end result uh, they want to be, uh, they want to have. And I'll tell you, some of these conversations when I start off uh, about DevOps is I, I've talked to customers that have just started their journey and they're, you know, um, uh, literally this is their first introduction to it. And I've worked with other customers that have been on their journey for a year and a half. And even those customers that I've, that I've worked with that have been on their journey for a long time, what I found is everybody does DevOps different. Uh, I, I've I can't tell you how many customers that I've worked with, no two have been even close to the same. Um, that's, a, that's an incredible challenge for us as we have to make it up as we go, but it's also an incredible opportunity to do it right every time because it can be customized every time. Uh, there's not a cookie cutter solution, but in DevOps, the best solution is gonna be uh, one that's, that's uh, infinitely customized for, uh, for your business, for the end user, for the customer. So after that introductory meeting, I understand what kind of training they need, what their tools are. And the reason I want to get that information up front is because during the VSM, I want to give them training. I want to train them on DevOps. I want to train them on uh, some of the new technologies that I might be, that I might be introducing to them <coughs> Excuse me, as they get started on their DevOps journey. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and schedule a VSM. The VSM, the value stream mapping, is the first and most important part of the DevOps journey. Um, that's where we whiteboard out their entire uh, environment. Uh, in my case, generally, I'm working with the CI/CD pipeline, uh, but you can use this for other aspects of the business as well. Uh, some uh, checklist of some of the things that we're we're going to do in that in that VSM. Uh, that's usually one to two days as we walk through that process, and I'm going to show you in detail what that looks like. And then I always take for the next step a hack fest, hackathon, however you whatever you want to call it 
where I work with the entire team, and in a few minutes we'll talk about who the, who the entire team is, and we actually start building. So DevOps to me is not about planning for six months or a year and a half or three years and then going out and build something. DevOps to me is week one, we're building our pipeline. Right? So it's very agile, very fast, very, very efficient. Um, and then uh, what I do for the hack is it's either between one and five days. Uh, you could do even two-week hacks if you wanted, um, but uh, for the most part, we, uh, I keep it under, under a week. And then on that last day, there's reporting. Uh, so we'll break up into different teams, and each team will take different pieces of the project that we want to build, and they'll report back at the end of the session. So it's a great opportunity for the entire team to work together. Now, as we look at the VSM, uh, you know, it, there's an enormous amount of information in there. But in order to collect that information, we need to have the right people in the room. So here's a checklist of who some of those right people in the room are. First and foremost, you'll notice I have an asterisk next to management or senior management sponsor. Uh, you really have to have leadership sponsorship to do, to do DevOps. And the reason why is because you're really bringing in multiple areas of the business together. It's the only way to do it um, effectively and efficiently. You can start it with a smaller group and just apply DevOps practices to your organization and your, your group. Absolutely, that's a, a huge benefit. But to get the most out of it, to get the most bang for your buck, um, and to be able to uh, streamline your processes, you want to bring others in. Um, uh, some of the most important architects, DevOps teams, innovation teams, developers, infrastructure, security, super important. QA is one everybody misses, but they're important to have in the room as well. Um, and uh, the DevOps, generally you want to have the senior people. As you're getting started, you don't necessarily want to start with the most junior people. You want to start with the people that understand the application, they understand the business, they understand the politics, uh, and we figure out what all those challenges are going to be from the beginning so we can work out uh, arrangements to overcome those challenges. And if you don't do this, you don't get the right people in the room, it doesn't necessarily mean you won't have success. It just means your success is going to come a lot slower. Uh, it's going to be a lot more challenging. It's going to make your job a lot harder. And inevitably, you may be a year and a half, two years, three years down the road and have nothing to show for it. Um, I hope that doesn't happen, but that's certainly a possibility if you don't get the right people on board. Um, even if you want to do it on a smaller team, you don't have all these people engaged, do it but make sure that the people that you're doing it with, you have at least the team leader, the manager of the team involved, and you're going from that approach. If you have an innovation or DevOps team, I would get them involved with what you're doing. I know, you know if, whenever you do that, there's always a chance that they're gonna say, no, stop, we're already going down a different direction and you're not privy to it, so just wait, right? A year and a half from now, three years from now, we'll share it with you. Um, in, if you're afraid that's going to happen, then you know you want to you want to optimize for your organization, for your piece of the organization. Um, go for it. Just recognize you're, you're, you've got a long road ahead of you. Um, on that note, I will share with you. I was working with an organization two weeks ago that did exactly that. Uh, the, their business is broken down into uh, two areas. Uh, one is uh, customer-facing applications. The other is enterprise application. The enterprise application area is five, six X the size of the customer facing applications. And um, the application side of the business, they, I think they had two or three teams, two teams I think, and uh, we just focused on them and their team. Now what ended up happening is they had so much success with that one week engagement that the innovation teams and the DevOps team came in and say, oh my God, we've been working on this for a year and we have you know, my first question, my first question always after I ask somebody if they've already started their DevOps journey and they say, yes, my very first question is, um, um, how long have you been on it? My next question is, um, do you have your CI CD pipeline uh, built yet? And are you running applications through it? Almost all the time they say no. It's a shame, but that's, that's the reality that the, that the world faces today. I want to talk a little bit about roles and responsibilities. And um, um, earlier in the prior session in this room, uh, there was a talk on security. Very, very, very important to get security involved early and often. In fact, I want them in the room for the VSM, which as you already know, from my standpoint, that's the very first step. Um, we want to incorporate security um, necessities into every aspect of the business. 
And I'm actually reading off the slide here, and I'm going to read off these next two slides, even though I'm not a slide reader. The job of security in DevOps is to enable others to automate compliance while incorporating security necessities in the organization. Now, that's for the risk piece, right? You have to incorporate those necessities for risk. Um, but their, their other job is to enable others to automate compliance. Now, remember I talked earlier about the bottom line, help build a product that will inspire our customers to become raving fans. As I'm coaching this team, so I'm going to bring this team together. As I'm coaching them, I'm laying it all on the line. This is our mission. If you have your own department goals, if you have your own organizational goals that are outside of this, put that aside for now. This is the theme that we want to work on. Okay? This is about bringing teams together, having everybody have a shared mission. Uh, so your mission might not be, you know, in this particular case, is not to mitigate all risk uh, um, uh, to the business, right, from a security standpoint. It is not um, develop the code the fastest or any of that kind of stuff, right? Everybody's on the same, same mission to help build a product that will inspire customers to become raving fans. Now, for other roles and responsibility, same thing. Uh, everyone has that, that mission. So security, I talked about their job, their role, incorporate security necessities, necessities in every aspect of the business, enable others, enable others to automate for compliance. That's a hard part for security. Enable others uh, to automate for compliance. What does that mean? It means you're relying on somebody else in the organization to automate your, uh, your compliance. It's hard for them because from a security standpoint, they want full control. But the reality is they're not coders, right? Are they the best people to automate security? No, developers are. The people that are actually writing the code. In a lot of cases, the infrastructure people are that are doing a lot of scripting and PowerShell and automation and stuff like that. So it's, it's about getting them to loosen up a little bit and let others help them. Uh, development, quickly build, deploy, and update a product that our customers love. We're not going to create raving fans if they don't love the products that we create. The second part of their job is to enable other groups by building what they need to support you. How many developers in the room? Show of hands. Okay. A uh, little over half the room. Your job is to enable others to help you. Right? If you spend all your time just doing part one of your job, you're not helping yourself. You're hurting yourself because you're not leveraging the work of others. Um, infrastructure, IT, build infrastructure as code, enable others by helping to eliminate waste throughout the technology landscape. IT is in a, in a prime position to understand what's going on in the organization. They're in a prime position to be able to help. They're also, you know, they're, how many people are in IT or an operation side of things today? Right? You guys should be in, in the world of automation. If you're not, you need to get there, and you need to get there fast, because that's the new job of IT, the new role of IT. Um, management, yes, management has a job in DevOps. That, that role is to enable the teams by giving them flexibility, guidance, and support to do what is needed and remove obstacles. That's their job. What about senior management? Embrace cultural change, because as you go on this DevOps journey, cultural change is really required. Um, and uh, if I have time, I'll talk a little bit more about cultural change in a minute. Um, and drive transformation in the organization. If you can get senior leadership to drive that transformational thinking, oh my God, the results that you can get out of DevOps are absolutely astonishing. Now, if you look at all of these holistically, what you'll see is as you go through this process, each and every one of these different groups will learn empathy. They'll understand the challenges of the other organizations. You know, uh, Dev will understand the challenges of, of, you know, deploying an application into production and making sure that it's up all the time and making sure that it works, if, works well for customers, right? Remember, we're, we all got that bottom line goal, so it's your application is not done when you send it over the fence to operations, okay? Um, each and every one of these roles and responsibilities for each and one of these groups, and I could add all the other different, uh, you know, QA and other, uh, other parts of the organization here, it would be the same thing. Everybody's job is to enable somebody else or everybody else in the, in the, uh, in the organization. Some expected results, I'm not going to read through these. These slides are made available. In fact, they're available right now on my blog, itproguru.com slash resources, or on my homepage, just hit the resources uh, link. It'll be really close to the top under, under DevOps. Um, so some expected results from the VSM hack. This is how you pitch, getting together and having this. Remember what I'm asking. I, I have sometimes 
10 to 30 people in a room where we're just spending two days drilling into their current processes. And then we're gonna spend another two to three days hacking. That's five days of some very senior people. It's a lot of investment a company is making. Um, so you, you gotta pitch it, you gotta sell it, and you gotta sell it hard. Um, but I do it all, all of the selling that I do, all of the pitching that I do to, to help organizations understand what DevOps is, is all based on the results. This slide is super important. What are the results that you can expect in your organization? What are the results that you can expect in the customers that you're going out to apply DevOps practices for? That's what goes here. That has to be clearly identified up front in order to get them, your organization or your department or whatever you're working with, in order to get them on the boat to be able to invest that kind of time. This is an introduction email to the, to the VSM, to the VSM process. I always start with a phone call though, so I, I, I kind of prime the pump with, uh, with either a face-to-face -face meeting if possible or a, or a phone call, and uh, then this is kind of the email that I'll send out as a follow-up. I have another email that, it, that defines the hackathon or the hack fest and introducing that. A complete, notice each of these are complete with customer quotes. These are not quotes from me, these are quotes from my customer that I'm giving, for, giving you to share. Um, I can't um, I can't share like who the companies are. I'm actually working on a, a, an updated slide deck where I can actually give you the company name uh, to, to put along with that, but uh, I don't have that available yet. I just have to get everybody's permission in order to release that publicly. A list of some DevOps practices. Most, a, a lot of them on the left-hand side you'll recognize infrastructure as code, continuous integration, automated testing, continuous deployment. Some of them on the right-hand side you may not recognize, like feature flags or self-service environments or hypothesis-driven development. One of the things that I'm doing in the VSM is I'm introducing all of these different concepts. Very, very briefly, this is maybe a 10-minute slide, five-minute, eight-minute slide, something like that. Introducing the different concepts that we're gonna be talking about of being able to deliver as we, as we go down this, this, this road. Okay, so this is a, um, a sample of a Visio doc that, I, and by the way, a Visio with you know, all of my drawings and stars and all that stuff also available on my blog. So you have that to, to start your own process of building your own uh, environment out using my tools. Um, so this is an environment before DevOps. Now, when I drew it out on the whiteboard, it looked more like this, right? A bunch of scribble, not quite as pretty as the Visio. Um, and when you drill in, I, I wanna just make this a lot bigger, ideation. Right? We're looking at, for this project, this, the lead time was 5.75 months before we started with DevOps. The, the uh, process, the time, the time to completion, generally a development life cycle was 18 months in this organization to put out an update for their application. Just an update, right? This is to going from one to, to two or, or 1.2 to two or two to 2.2 .2 even, right? It took forever. And uh, the other thing I want to drill down in here is notice in the uh, left-hand side over here where I have L equals two to three months, P equals one. Took one week of processing time, but my lead or lag time was two to three months, okay? Um, actually, the one is, is, is also measured in months. And the five here is five people, okay? You see the five in blue. Um, then I have L equals four weeks, uh, P equals two weeks, people equals 20. As I'm going through and drawing this out, I'm not writing anything on the board. What I'm doing is I'm starting with, okay, I have an idea that I want to bring into your organization. You want to develop, you, you want to go through the process of creating an application based on this idea. What do you do next? I literally just ask them, what do you do next? They tell me and I write it on the board. Okay, how long does that take? You know, how long does it take before you can kick it off? What is the, what is the lag time in between there? Is there? What does it look like? Is it a bunch of meetings? Um, how much time between those meetings? And, I'm just writing down numbers. I'm writing down how long it takes um, to go through that different process. This allows us a visual to see just how painful this long drawn out process is. And then as we go further down the road, what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna understand how long does it take? Where are the gaps? Where are the waste as we go through that? And I'm highlighting those. I'm actually drawing those in red and putting it like an M uh, for manual process or D for defects. There's another slide deck out there with, uh, with these uh, that is uh, a VSM. That is the slide deck that I actually use during the VSM. And on the bottom of that, there's a long list of the different waste categories like defects, 
um, like extra processing, like task switching, manual steps, handoffs, stuff like that. Um, so I'm trying to figure those out as we go through the VSM. How much quantifiable waste? I need a number. How do I get the number? They're giving me the number. You're giving me the number as I'm doing these engagements. Um, and then the total time. How long does it take on a calendar to get it done? How many man hours does it take to get it done? Um, and then to get, to get a home run, this is where the rubber meets the road, okay? Uh, you generally are not gonna have this in, in your VSM. This is gonna come afterwards. So what I'll do is for the leaders of the VSM, I'll say, now take this incredible information that I've, that I've shared with you, that you, sorry, take this information that you've shared with me and take it one step further. Create a total cost. Create a total cost, and the customer, that I, this, is, this was, all of this was updated in the last couple of weeks. This was, this was a project that I worked on literally a couple of weeks ago. So I went out to the, uh, uh, this was actually the global development manager for that uh, customer uh, facing line of business. And this one project that we worked on to, to send through a CIC pipeline, he estimated that the cost was $2.5 million to create this 18 month project. Now, what he came up, what they came up with is they expected after, just after one week of engagement, okay, it was one week over the course of a month because I did a two, a two day, uh, uh, hour and a half meeting. It was a, like a two day gap between that and the time I did the VSM. And there's a three week gap before I actually did the hackathon. So over the course of about a month and five days of engagement, he estimated that he sees the, the, the path to save a half a million dollars on this one application alone. Those are real dollars that he can go back to his business leaders and say, we need to triple down, quadruple down on these DevOps practices um, to save the organization big time. Not only that, he expected instead of having an 18 month plan, he was planning on a six month plan. And every expectation to move that down to a month and then even um, every couple of weeks at some time in the near future. So everything went incredibly fast. And this is what it looked like when we're done. Um, so the re release cycle went from 18 months to four weeks. Now the reason four weeks, instead I just mentioned six months, the four weeks was putting those features out there for people to try and start doing things like testing in production. Who does testing in production? It's a really cool feature. Okay, think about this, you've got your insiders, you got people that have asked for something, you know, through a help desk ticket. Why not let them be your beta testers? Ask them if they want to try it out on, on, the, on your, you know, while it's in testing, while it's, in, while it's still in development. Microsoft has a program, it's called the Insiders. How many people sign up for Insiders on Microsoft or Windows or whatever? A lot of people do. Microsoft gets millions of people to be their test in production kind of scenario. Very cool technology. Um, hot fixes went from six weeks. Literally, this is what I asked them. How long would it take you if the developer misspelled the word config on a menu and it got all the way out to production before it was noticed? How long would it take you to get that fixed back, in, that back into production? Their answer was six weeks before DevOps. Uh, their answer, after that one week, they saw a way that they could get it out the same day. Okay, very, very, very powerful stuff. Our investment was a total of three weeks. Okay, so let's do some whiteboarding. How much time do I have? Okay, this is where I get... I got five minutes. Five minutes real quick. I need a couple of volunteers. I want you to... Um, Come, come up with an idea, give me an application, let's just call it ABC, okay? We're gonna create this ABC application, and I'm in the idea, ideation phase. Um, so what's the first thing you have whenever you have an idea, what's the first thing you gotta do to get your business to buy off on it? First thing, just shout it out to me. ROI. ROI. What else? Come on. Huh? Customer. Who's the customer? Okay, what else? Competitors. Competitors, okay. What else? Use cases. 
Very good. And there's a lot of other stuff. Eventually, you get down here to funding, and then you get to sign off, right? Before you can get over here to dev um, and CI, CD, etc. Right? Um, so let's just take this first one. Um, ROI. What's the process look like for determining ROI? You have to know what the product is. One of the things you need is you need to understand uh, specs, right? You have to know a little bit about what the application's gonna do before you can calculate ROI. So we drill down into all of these different things. Okay, so now you need a, a high level technical specs, right? It's one of the things that you need. Um, and uh, maybe it's before ROI, maybe it's after, wherever that ends up being. Each one of these steps you drill down ask the customer, okay, how do you do that? What does that look like? Whenever you want to go out there and, and create the technical, the high level technical specs of what this is going to, what features or capabilities we're going to have in it. Uh, what is the ROI? How are we going to determine what, what the cost is? Well, we can't determine the cost until we know what's in it. We can't determine um, uh, the value to it until we figure out what value we're going to be able to provide to the customer. So before we can get to that, we need the specs. So how many people is it going to take to fill out the specs? Somebody volunteer. I just want to use your, you and your organization. I want to walk through it real quick. How long would it take to, to come up with a technical specs for a small application? See, I don't have this problem in my, in my boardrooms. Everybody participates. Uh, I'll tell you, it's usually multiple people. So usually it's four to five people. Um, and usually when we're getting started, uh, it could be three to four months. And I'm like, we're not asking for a blueprint here. We don't need everything that's going to be in the application. You need four to five months to put that together? Well, yeah, that's what it takes. Um, but the reality is that's the waterfall way of doing things. You do all this work up front. And what happens when you do all this work up front? Inevitably, you have to do it over again because stuff doesn't work the way you were, you were expecting it to. So with that, I'm out of time. I wanted to, and the last thing I want to leave you with is make sure you do your L equals and your P equals. Right? How many people? Four people? How long? Four months? How much actual time was working? Right? Those are the numbers that you want to generate as you're going through that value stream mapping. The value for all is getting everybody in the room and everybody helping each other out. Thank you very much.